Hello everyone, welcome to the second session of Machine Learning with R. My name is Johnson. Today we are looking at confusion metrics. Uh, don't worry, a confusion metric is not confusing at all. Um, so what is confusion metrics? Confusion metrics um, uh, is uh, just a table uh, of predicted value versus true values or reference values. Uh, it is used for evaluating the performance of a classifier. Uh, so for example, neural network, support vector machine, uh, naive base. Um, so over here, we, I have an example of a confusion matrix. Uh, so you have the predicted value versus reference values. Uh, so for example, of the six cases of brain cancer, six of them, so all of them have been classified as brain cancer. Two cases of actual brain cancer have been misclassified as colorectal cancer, so predicted as colorectal cancer in other words. Uh, so this is just a confusion matrix showing um, the uh, actual disease that um, a group of patients have versus what the doctors uh, diagnose them with. So as you can see, uh, any entry on the diagonal uh, on the diagonal line. So here, on the main diagonal, here, 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 are correctly classified cases. Entries anywhere else indicate misclassification. So they are wrong. So in this case, uh, we have two here, which means two cases of actual brain cancer have been diagnosed as colorectal cancer, which is wrong. Uh, so that's basically what a confusion matrix looks like. It tells you um, how good uh, your classifier is. So let's see this example in detail. Uh, suppose you have a patient, a group of patients, excuse me, of 32 uh, patients. Eight of them actually have brain cancer. Six of them actually have colorectal cancer. 15 of them actually have kidney stone. And the three of them actually have lung cancer. Now, machine learning is like uh, a doctor uh, going to medical school. Uh, you, you train the machine using certain models such as naive base, neural network, PAMR, um, uh, uh, classification tree. It's like sending a doctor to medical school, have the doctor learn from uh, the, his causes, write his thesis, and then he's going to graduate, and then he's going to come to a hospital, do his job. So his job is just um, uh, classifying um, patients, uh, making predictions of what kind of diseases they have based on their symptoms. So for example, you can have a brain cancer patient. The doctor in this case correctly identifies the disease as brain cancer. Uh, but in the second case, that doctor uh, made a mistake classifying a brain cancer patient as a patient with colorectal cancer. So that's wrong. Uh, this one is correct, and then kidney stone patient correctly uh, um, predicted as kidney stone patient. Brain cancer again correct. Lung cancer predicted as kidney stone unfortunately wrong. Kidney stone predicted as brain cancer no. Lung cancer predicted as lung cancer that's right. So this is what supervised learning is. This is a very good example in my opinion. So basically you. Uh, train a model by having it look at certain parameters and then uh, based on uh, the patterns you established by learning, by training, uh, you can ask that model to make predictions later on on new data sets which we call them test sets. Um, so Let's continue on with our example. Over here, I have that 32 patients. The red uh, uh, fonts indicate 
the, the, the correctly, uh, the, the actual uh, distribution of patients. So eight of them actually have brain cancer, six of them actually have uh, colorectal cancer, 15 of them actually have kidney stones, three of them actually have uh, lung cancer. So now uh, let's uh, uh, look at uh, uh, what kind of classification we have. Um, I'm going to switch to orange color. So of the eight brain cancer patients, we have six of them diagnosed with brain cancer. So we have uh, six of them here. Two of them uh, predicted as, uh, with um, colorectal cancer. So we have two cases of actual reference brain cancer predicted as colorectal cancer. Okay, over here we have six actual cases of colorectal cancer, four of them correctly predicted, two of them misclassified, mispredicted as kidney stone. And then of the 15 kidney stone cases, all of them predicted correctly. Of the three patients with lung cancer, two of them predicted with kidney stone, one of them predicted correctly. So this is uh, what the confusion matrix looks like. Uh, so now, um, let's uh, take a look at how to uh, generate confusion matrices from carrot, uh, from R, basically. Okay, so now let's see how do we do uh, confusion matrix in R. Um, so firstly, uh, I'm going to create a data frame containing the actual distribution of um, patients and uh, the uh, predicted distribution of cases. Um, so there are many ways to do this. Uh, what I do is just um, uh, create um, four vectors for the uh, actual conditions and the four vectors of uh, the diagnosed conditions. So right here I have actual brain cases. It's just a, uh, a repetition of brain cancer eight times. Actual colorectal cancer cases, repetition of colorectal cancer six times. And uh, same thing for kidney stone, same thing for lung cancer. And then over here for predicted cases, I also have repetition values. Uh, and then I uh, basically concatenate the um, uh, actual cases together and then get uh, something called the reference. So my actual distribution of cases. And then I have the predicted um, um, uh, vector, which is uh, just a concatenate, uh, concatenation, concatenation of uh, the um, predicted brain cancer cases, predicted colorectal cancer cases, predicted kidney stone cases, predicted lung cancer cases. And then I'm going to have a data frame and let's see how it looks. So this is my data frame. It contains the reference cases and the predicted cases. So brain cancer, predicted brain cancer, pre brain cancer, predicted colorectal cancer on the seventh row, unfortunately. And then colorectal cancer, some of them predicted correctly, some of them predicted as kidney stone. Uh, kidney stones, mostly predicted correctly. And then for lung cancer, some of them predicted as kidney stone, one case correctly predicted. So how do we make a confusion matrix? That's very easy. You just do table predicted reference. And uh, there you go, this is your um, confusion matrix. So six cases of brain cancer predicted correctly, two cases of brain cancer predicted as colorectal cancer, four cases of colorectal cancer predicted correctly, four, uh, two cases of colorectal cancer predicted as kidney stone, 15 cases, all 15 cases of kidney stone predicted correctly, one case of lung cancer predicted correctly, two cases of lung cancer predicted as kidney stone. So as you can see, all the diagonal entries indicate 
uh, correct the classification anywhere else, uh, it indicates um, misclassification. What you can also do is to use the um, package called caret, so just the library caret, and then type confusion matrix predicted reference. It's very important that you do predicted first and then reference, otherwise sometimes you'll get an error because that's just the backwards that's just wrong. So let's see what we got. We get the same confusion matrix here, the, the same confusion matrix which is same as what we got above. What's cool about this package is that it also tells you the accuracy as well as the um, a confidence interval for the accuracy. And not only that, you also get uh, kappa statistic p-values. You also get per class accuracy measures, such as class sensitivity, class, speci um, class specificity, balanced accuracy, etc. Uh, next uh, time, next session, we will take a look at all of them and uh, see what they mean. And uh, this is quite useful sometimes. Um, so I will put the uh, code on uh, GitHub so you can download them. Uh, it's pretty easy to run. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Make sure to su subscribe and like. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Next session, we will take a look at how to uh, use established algorithms such as uh, neural network, naive base, classification trees, etc., PEMR, uh, to make predictions, to, in other words, to perform supervised learning tasks, which is pretty cool. Uh, see you there. Bye bye.